of you out there, I know Thanksgiving is a little uh, early for that, but I might not see you on that weekend, so I might as well say it now. <laughs> see, the big snowstorms coming this week. Yeah. This is like, uh, we're getting into it. I gotta go get more shovels. I broke all my shovels last winter. <laughs> I'm too strong. Broke them. Yeah, yeah. Look at these arms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, usually, we usually only talk about the Buffalo Bills in the Buffalo Bills segment. Yeah. But man, I tell you, that Viking game, right off the top, it deserves some conversation, I think. Well, I mean, one of it is the fact that the uh, Bills are live or die basically on Josh Allen. I feel bad for the young man because every week he comes in with this, well, we weren't sure if he was going to play. We kind of knew Duffy called it right, that he was going to play. But you still came out with a loss. Who knows how that game would have went if you had uh, your backup quarterback and, and Case Keenum go in. You would have won, but you don't know now. You've definitely got to win your division. Did, uh, did you just say you would have won with your – he threw for 300 yards. And you still lost. Okay, the loss had nothing to do with the offense. Did you have the lead in the game? Yes. Yeah, you did have the lead in the game. Which oh, is, wait a minute. What happened? Which is going to bring me to my next point. Please give it to me. The offense, although not great in the second half, had nothing to do with the loss. And it all comes down to this. And you can make this argument for the last three games. The Bills and Leslie Frazier did an unbelievable job for the first five, six, seven weeks of the season covering up the massive deficiencies they had in the defensive backfield, right? As soon as Micah Hyde went out and Jordan Poirier was dealing with his injuries, you had problems. Can, uh, Dane Jackson has missed time. K.U. Elam has missed time, including that game last week. Christian Bedford has missed time. In the last three weeks, NFL offensive coordinators have looked at what's going on in the Bills' defensive backfield and said, hey, uh, there are no NFL starters right now in this backfield, and we're going to take advantage of it. You cannot ask Christian Bedford, six-round rookie, Cam Lewis, undrafted free agent out of the UB, to guard a guy like Justin Jefferson. You can't do it. And what's frustrating is the scheme is working. Like, the players are in the area of the zone where the play has to be made. They just can't make the play. And I don't blame them for it, right? They, they weren't drafted and signed to be put in this position. It's the injuries that's the problem. At one point, their sixth safety was on the field against Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson, who's one of the best tight ends in the league. When the injuries are good, everything is fine. I understand the pressure Josh is feeling, knowing what the defense is dealing with right now, which might be why we're seeing him doing what he's doing. The only problem right now is the defensive backfield. When that's taken care of, everything is okay. Is this just a one-off game? I, 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 when I when I put this in at the, at the top of the lineup for this week, it says like that game is being recognized like oh game of the year, maybe game of the decade, maybe best game ever, most exciting. All the rest of the stuff that happened at the end of that contest, like do you overcome this or is it something you think that's easy just to file away and say never happened? No, no, no. Well, you, well this is the way the Bills live. I mean, you've had a lot of close games this year where you came back against the Ravens earlier this year. You came back Kansas City. You live on this edge. This is the way the Buffalo Bills play the season. So if you want to go in with a 50-50 gamble and put it on your quarterback and your defense, which I do understand and respect the fact that they are injured, this is where you are as a season. I don't believe it plays into the psyche of the Bills. You've been on some of these games. You tend to forget those. It's the losses that you really sort of hamper around, and that's what I feel bad about. It's a, there's a narrative out there that says that they miss Brian Dable. Uh, no, I disagree with that. I mean, look, you have to give a little bit of slack to Ken Dorsey. I mean, people forget, as great as this offense was humming early on, it's his first time ever calling plays in the NFL. He's never been an offensive coordinator. There are going to be growing pains. I mean... Is this one of them? Uh, possibly. Possibly. I don't know. I mean... My yeah. biggest issue is when they went for it, the, the fourth down and they tried it and missed it on, it was fourth and two? Yes. But it was second and two. Yes. And, it, and you think a couple plays out in advance, if it's second and two and you know you're going to, it's four down territory for you, if the coaches know this, yeah. it, it was pass, pass, pass. No, it's like, oh, it's second and two and you're running the clock, you're protecting a lead. And you have two it, rushing touchdowns yes, in the game. Yes, the, the, the run game was fantastic. Didn't we talk about and that last week? it goes away in the second half. 80% of Singletary's yards must come in the first half. I don't know where it goes. And you I don't think it's his fault. And you traded for a running back at the deadline and that has yet to him. carry a ball in two games. Look, I'm with you 100%. I don't know if that's a Dorsey issue. I don't know if they're giving Josh the ability to take what he wants when he's out there. Because, I mean, look, Josh is going to take what Josh takes. He wants the ball in his hands. I appreciate that. And I don't think it's an ego thing. I think it's a he thinks he can do it thing. I don't know what the answer to that question is. I do think that the fear of teams coming back on you now is 